welcome to how to become an Appium Desktop Ninja. My name is Wim Sellers, I'm a senior solutions architect at Sauce Labs. This video will be part of a series of six videos where we look into what you need to know to become that Appium Desktop Ninja. And in this video we're going to cover how to configure an Android emulator or an iOS simulator on your local machine. I am working on a Mac machine, but I tried to cover as much as possible for Windows and also for Linux. So we're hopefully going to cover everything so it will work on your local machine. We will first start with using Android. So for Android there are a few prerequisites. First of all, you need to have a Linux, a Windows or a Mac machine. And be aware of the fact that an Android emulator is a virtual machine. You can host a virtual machine within a virtual machine. But it's always advised, especially when you're developing and you want to see some advantage of a real machine to also use it because you would then have more CPU and memory to use. A virtual machine itself will already consume a lot of power. So try to use a real device. And secondly, you need to download Android Studio and I will share the link in the comments. But Android Studio is the IDA you need to use to develop something for Android. But it will also provide you the option to create an emulator. So that's why you need to use Android Studio. For Android Studio, you also need to use a Java development kit. So you need to download it and also a link will be provided in the comments. What we then need to do is we need to set some environment variables. We need to set the Java home, we need to set the Android home, we also need to set extra variables and include them in our path. And we will also cover that for Windows, for Mac and for Linux on how to do that. So let's start with Windows. If you downloaded Android Studio to your Windows machine, you need to go to the, uh, this computer, to the system properties of your computer, and you will go to environment variables. And if you would click on that button, a new screen with environment variables will pop up. And in this case, this is from my Windows machine. You can already see that I downloaded the JDK. I already added it to the Java home. I also added a Android home environment variable here also with the path. For Java, it might be pretty simple to figure out where the JDK is installed. But for Android, it might be a little bit harder. So what we're going to do here is how can you retrieve that path? And there's an easy way for that. If you installed Android Studio, you can use the AVD or the SDK manager. And if you're opening the SDK manager, you can see the path where Android installed the SDKs. So this is the path that you need to have. Copy that path, then create a new environment variable, call it Android underscore home, all in capitals, and provide that value in the variable value field. Click on OK and it is saved. The next thing that you then need to do if you added the Android own and if you added the Java home to it is to add extra environment variables. In this case, we need to add them to the path. And in this case, what you see here, we added the Java home and the bin folder, the platform tools folder for Android home and the tools folder. If you would add this to your path, then Appium desktop, Appium, but especially also the emulators for Android can use these paths to start an Android emulator properly from your Windows machine. This is for Windows, but what to do if you have a Mac? For Mac, it's a little bit easier. For Mac, you just need to change your profile and it depends if you're using a bash profile or in this case, I'm using a ZSHRC file. I open that one, I need to edit it and I need to add the Java home to it. This is the path where normally the Java home will be installed. Then I also need to add the Android home. And for Android Studio, again, open it, go to the tools, go to the SDK manager, and then you would see the Android SDK location. I'm also going to show you this afterwards in a demo. Then we need to add it to the path. And this is basically what you can add to that path. 
I also mentioned here in the comments, also add emulator to it, especially on uh, your um, OS X machine. And I will also show you the advantage of that uh, in a few minutes. Then when you're done, reload the file or restart your terminal just to make sure that this will work. Then for Linux, it's almost the same as for iOS. Um, just take a look at these options, provide them, restart your terminal or restart uh, 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 your computer if that makes you feel more comfortable. So now that we covered Android, let's take a look at iOS. Well, for iOS, first of all, you need to have a Mac. And when you have a Mac, you also need to have Xcode and the command line tools. You can download Xcode from uh, the App Store. And when you open Xcode, you don't need to install anything extra. You don't need to start a new project. But when you open Xcode, you go to the preferences of Xcode, go to the location, and there you can select the command line tools. Then also for, and for iOS, you need to have the Java development kit. If you already installed it because you were working with Android previously, then you don't need to do it now again because it's already installed in your, on your machine. Then what we also need to have for iOS is we need to install Cartage. And Cartage is an iOS dependency manager and we need to use Homebrew for that. And Homebrew is a OS X dependency manager. And just to verify if you can do that on your machine, you need to execute the following steps. To verify if you're using or if you have Homebrew installed, you can do brew minus V and it will give you a console output as you can see here in this screenshot. If you don't have that out, uh, output, then download it or install it with this command. And then with this command, Homebrew will be installed. When it is done with the installation, you need to install Cartage. And like I said, Cartage is a dependency manager for iOS development. So install it and you will get an output like this. And in the end, you will get a beer. Uh, sorry, it's a digital beer, but this is how uh, Homebrew is working. It installed Cartage successfully on your machine. Now you're done with setting up iOS on your Mac. So let me get back to Android Studio because for Android Studio, we need to create an emulator. And when we create that emulator, we need to go to the tools and to the Android Virtual Device Manager, also seen as AVD Manager, and we need to create a virtual device. And I will also walk through this during a live demo. But first of all, I'm going to show you some screenshots on how to do that. You click on Create Virtual Device. When you clicked on virtual device, you need to select the hardware. And yeah, this is software hardware, uh, emulated hardware. We just select the phone. In this case, we select the Pixel 3a. Then we verify our configuration. Which version do we want to have of Android? Uh, what name do we want to give our emulator? Uh, just fill it in here. If the version is not there, you also have the option to download other versions of Android. And I will show that later on. You click finish and your emulator will be added to the overview you had in the first screen. This is how you can configure your Android emulators. For iOS, it's already delivered almost out of the box. And with out of the box, I mean when you download Xcode, you will already get some emulators. The only thing you need to do here if you want to have multiple versions, if you go to the system preferences of uh, Xcode or you go to the preferences of Xcode and then in Xcode you click on components and as you can see 12.2 was installed on my machine you can even download 13.6 or whatever version you want to have as an emulator to use for your Appium test cases. So now that we've seen how this works let's take a look at a demo and show you how you should really use this on your machine and we're going to start with Android. So when we start with Android, we first need to open Android Studio. So let us open Android Studio. And when you've never worked with Android Studio, you will get an overview of the projects that you can start or if you want to start a new clean project. I already executed that. So I'm just here starting a very simple project. 
Um, you don't need to build any app or whatsoever. This is only for setting up the emulator and setting up the simulator. Uh, sorry, not for the simulator. This is only for setting up your Android emulator. So if you want to configure that, you go to tools. But before we go to the tools, and I will zoom in a little bit here, I also wanted to show you the SDK manager. The SDK manager is the manager that will show you all the Android software development kits that you've downloaded, uh, Android 10, 9, 8, that kind of stuff. And here you will also find the location. As you can see here, Android SDK location. This is the location that I was referring to when you need to add the, path, the, the location to your path, to your Android home. Let me zoom out now and let me now go to tools and, oh, sorry, close this one. Let me go to tools, click on the AVD manager. Now you will get an overview of all the virtual devices that are already installed on your machine. If you don't have any virtual devices here, you can click on create a virtual device and you will get that hardware screen. In this case, I'm going to select the Pixel 3a. And when I selected that one, I can click on next. Now I have the option to select my system image. And in this case, I need to use x86 images because x86 images are the fastest for local execution. Here you can download one of the versions and I already downloaded specific versions. I want to use an Android 10 plus emulator on my machine. So I can now just click on next. And now I have the screen where I can give it a name and we can keep this name, but we can also say sauce demo, uh, uh, sauce demo, um, let me say MU. And then just to make sure that it's good that we know this is for example, for Android 11. So I can now recognize it easily in the list, but you can give it whatever name you want to give it. You would then click on the button finish. And if we wait a few seconds, we already see that the emulator has been added to our list. Now there are two ways to start your Android emulator. You can do that by clicking on the play button. And when you click on the play button, it will start it. Or you can do it in a different way where you don't need to have Android Studio running on your machine. Because like I mentioned before, if you're using an emulator, you're using a virtual machine. It will consume a lot of power and memory from your machine. But if you already have Android Studio running in the background, you have less CPU power, you would have less memory to use. So my preferred way would not be to open Android Studio, go to AVD managers and then start the emulator, but by using a simple trick. And that trick will be the following. I will first close my Android Studio and let me just do it like this. I have a terminal opened here. As you might remember from one of my previous slides, I mentioned that if you provide the emulator to your path, you are able to use the emulator command from Android Studio for, uh, to open a emulator or even to get a list of an emulator of all the uh, emulators installed on your machine. So in this case, let's say emu, uh, oh, emulator. If we want to have a list of the emulators that are installed on our machine, we can do a list AVDs. And if we would do that, you will get an overview of all the installed emulators on your machine. And as you can already see, you would have the sauce demo dash mu underscore 11. That's the emulator we just created. Let us now start an emulator from the command line. We can do that by using emulator. And then we need to provide a command. If we don't know which command we need to provide to start, we can now just press enter. And you would see you would get an error saying no AVD specified use at foo or minus AVD foo to launch a virtual device named foo. So for now, I'm going to do emulator, then say add, 
and I'm going to start this specific pixel. This is an already pre-configured emulator on my machine. I can now just say start and as you can see the emulator is already there. I don't need to configure or I don't need to start Android Studio to make this work. It will save me a lot of memory and CPU consumption. Now that we've covered Android Studio, let's take a look at iOS simulators. So first of all, if you want to start your simulator, let's open Xcode by typing this and we will get a screen of all the projects that I have or maybe not the projects that I have that I might want uh, to open. Then I would go to the corner here to Xcode and in that corner I have the option to open the developer tools and then click on simulator. This is a way on how to start your simulator. But before we do that, I first want to show you the preferences. So I mentioned before you have the option to download extra simulators from iOS. If I would now click on the preference option, I will get a new screen and let me zoom out a bit. I will get a new screen, go to the components tab and from the components tab you have the option to download different versions of the simulators which you might want to use for your automation. If you would just click one, it will download a simulator. I'm not going to do that now because it will take some time to download a simulator. As you can see, it's around three gigabytes of data. Um, but just click on it so it will become blue, it will be installed, and then you would have a simulator running on your machine. Let me now just close this one, go to Xcode, go to open developer tools and open simulator. If I would now click on local machine, if this will be the first time that you're building a simulator, this will take some time because it needs to start with a fresh setup. And as you can see here, the simulator is started. And then if I would focus on the simulator, I also have the option to open different devices by going to file, open device, going to iOS 13.7 and these are the devices that automatically got installed when I downloaded Xcode with the simulators. So if I want I can now add or start a new simulator and I have the option to run multiple test cases on an Android emulator or an iOS simulator. We've covered the theory in the first video in this video we co covered configuring Android and iOS. In our next video we're going to set up Appium Desktop, connect it to an Android or iOS device and we'll then explore all the screens that Appium Desktop provides us. So I hope you enjoyed this video and hope to see you in the next video.